Oh my god, this is a big one. It's really going to leave the Arsenal fan base divided on whether they want him or not. But Arsenal are weighing up a clear Mbappé transfer, guys. It's a big story and I think you guys have to go ahead and obviously tell us what you think about it. As soon as possible, I give you the source. Where it's going to have to come in from and when is Arsenal thinking of really getting in Kylian Mbappe at the Emirates. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? And where you watching us from, I go by the names of Rokani David. Smash the like button. Comment and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, I would like to send, <coughs> should I call it a disclaimer? Should I call it a warning? Should I call it some bit of information? You know, some people tend like they know, yet they are talking on a naive side of their lives, you know? <clears throat> Let no one lie to you on this world, in the business we are doing, as far as transfer news is concerned, that Fabrizio Romano is the only credible journalist, right? And you're not, you don't have any, any authority to come on this channel and tell us that we should only bring you stories coming in from Fabrizio Romano, you know? We are having 15,000 subscribers, and out of 15,000 subscribers, only one subscriber comes in through and says, we want stories coming in from Fabrizio Romano, and the rest is wrong news. That's, that's being, that's being, um, how can I, how can I even term it? Because I don't want to insult a person, but that's being so much selfish about yourself that you feel like what you want is what it's true, and what you, what you don't want is not true. So, I'm letting you know that we are having close to 30 tier one journalists and let me bring you up to speed these stories of declan rice that you're seeing right now it was not broken by, by fabricio romano no it wasn't it was broken i think by guna blogger all team x something in january and then david austin was the second person to come in and obviously talk about it so <clears throat> every story i bring here i bring it here on the screen i show you the source and i quote the journalist that is going to hate to really put it up and if at all you feel like i'm cooking up my stories you can as well go ahead and really go onto the website and or the twitter handle of that web of that journalist and obviously see what he went ahead and really published on his twitter so stop talking on a naive side of view it's not by mistake that we are having fifteen thousand subscribers here no way you know if you think it's easy, you go out and start your own channel and see. You know, it's not easy to build a channel like this. And this community is really so much responsive. And I like my subscribers. But those few who come in through and obviously try to sell their narratives that we are putting out negative and wrong information are just people misleading this community. But we've built this channel on credibility 100%. We don't cook stories. If at all you feel like you are known to well occupied or attended to on this channel, there are very many other channels. You can as well go and watch other channels because it's free exit and free entry. <laughs> that is it. You freely subscribe, you freely unsubscribe. You go in the comment section and threaten Rokan David that I'm going to unsubscribe. It's okay. If you feel like this place is not okay for you, you can unsubscribe. It's very much okay. You know yourself because you were into the comment section and I even replied to you. And I needed to start up this video like this because some people think that they are doing us justice doing here, you know. But searching this information, you should value people, you know. You should value the work we do for you because we go ahead and really search this information, pile it up all together and organize it and throw it into your face. It's not something easy, guys. Let's get into the Mbappe story. We are talking clear Mbappe. In this story, we are talking Caesar as Pliqueta, crossing from Chelsea to Atletico Madrid. We are talking Tinali, right? We are talking William, formerly at Arsenal, threatening to leave Fulham if at all they don't meet his demands. So, that is William in there for you at that side. So, smash the like close to 400 times and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we want to hit 20,000 subscribers until this channel. But I would like to thank everyone who has been part of our growth from the first subscriber that you were until the 15,000 subscribers that you've been, right? So, let's start it off a story coming in from Steve K. He writes for transfer.com. Steve K is really close to the Arsenal side. And if I told you follow most of the stories that he writes about that are really accurate are all about 
uh, are all about Arsenal. Right now, today he has gone ahead to put out a statement that shocked the world, and he said, "Arsenal are weighing up a move for Kylian Mbappe in 2024. Transfer.com have been told that the PSG attacker is admired by Arsenal, who are considering whether or not to send a package." to the Frenchman's representatives, Mbappe's contract is up next year. <laughs> that is it coming in from the transfer.com and that is Steve K. Now, Kylian Mbappe to Arsenal. Now, if Arsenal are weighing, weighing into sign Kylian Mbappe next year, that means they are not willing to spend 200 million, it's like 170, 170 million pounds on Kylian Mbappe. But I understand that a team that's going to have to spend a hundred and five million pounds on Declan Rice next summer, they can only add that money and obviously get Kylian Mbappe. I really understand. But in life, if at all there is a car for free and another one to pay for when they're of the same model, same engine power, what do you go for? I think you go for the free one because you're going to save that amount of money. So Arsenal are monitoring and weighing up the situation of Kylian Mbappe. And if Atoli doesn't leave PSG and is available for free <laughs> next summer, then Arsenal are plotting a move to go on and be signed Kylian Mbappe. That is something great for Arsenal. And it shows you how Arsenal is going to have to elevate to the next level. Because in the history of Arsenal, We've not seen them sign world-class players, right? I think even if you go back to when <coughs> Arsene Wenger came in at Arsenal, <coughs> the players started up with, they are not world-class, but they were, they were promising and unfinished articles. Thierry Onu was not a finished article, was not a world-class player by then, though by the time he left Arsenal, he was a proven world-class player. Patrick Vieira was not a world-class player, but obviously he became a world-class player at Arsenal. Emmanuel Petit was not a world-class player, but he became a world-class player at Arsenal. Uh, Sylvian Viltrud became a world-class player. Dennis Bergkamp became a world-class player. Robert Perez became world-class. Samuel Nasri was top-class, but by the time he came in through, was not top-class. Fabregas was not top-class by the time he started playing at Arsenal. By the time he left Arsenal, he was top-class. So Arsene Wenger had that touch of not signing finished articles and obviously bringing in those talented players that would be the next big thing. And by the time he started bringing in finished articles like Mesut Ozil, you know, Pierrick Merrick, Aubameyang, because those were finished articles, David Luiz, finished articles, um, it was really in the evening of his career. And that proceeded even when Unai Emery came in through because I never saw Unai Emery signing in a world-class player, right? But for Mikel Ateta, he has gone ahead to elevate this. His first world-class signing, I think, was mm, mm, Gabriel Jesus, world-class player, <laughs> that's it. Zinchenko, world-class player. But the right, the other signings made him through when he came in through at Arsenal, not world-class. Because his first summer, he brought in, <coughs> um, in the summer of 2020, he brought in William. That's when he brought in um, this guy. Um... Gabriel Magales, that's when he brought him in. Um, that's when he brought in Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey was a bit, was nearing world class. Yeah. So, but this time round, he has gone ahead to sign world class players. Zinchenko, Gabriel Jesus, world class. So, if he's going in for Kylian Mbappe and looking at that level, that means Arsenal have gone ahead to obviously elevate from a team that has been looked as that has been looked as a struggling team to an elite team and they feel like they can pay the wages of Kylian Mbappe. Right now, Kylian Mbappe is earning £1 million per week at PSG, but I'm 100% sure that he's willing to really take, take what we call a pay cut to leave PSG. And we went ahead and told PSG that if you cannot sell me this summer, I'm not renewing my contract, I'm moving out on a free. Real Madrid is in for the deal. €250 million Euros is what is what PSG is calling in for Kylian Mbappe, who is left with one year on his contract. Probably or arguably the best player in the world as per now. But I've already said this onto my other sister channel, United Matters, when it comes to Kylian Mbappe. 
because he has been so much linked to Man United because of the Qataris being in line to take over Man United that Kylian Mbappe and his entrage will be so much happy to come to the Premier League. Do you know why? His nemesis, Haaland, that they are fighting for the next hair of Ronaldo and Lionel Messi crown is playing at Man City. So he would like to rival him when either playing for Man United or playing for Arsenal. So I think Arsenal can get that deal over the line, but not this summer. And we wait and see if at all no team comes out to put money on the table for Kylian Mbappe. But Real Madrid is willing to offer crazy money for Kylian Mbappe. And it's said Fiorentino Perez met the Emil of Qatar and they discussed onto this deal of Kylian Mbappe. So let's wait and see how that's going to pan out. But it's a story that Arsenal is weighing up Mbappe transfer to the Emirates. Next transfer window. Not this transfer window. Understand the English and take it in well, right? So let's continue to the next story after that Mbappe story. And uh, before we go on to that, uh, he had a link up with following Balogan in America before Balogan returned to, to London to start doing his job. That is, Balogan and Kylian Mbappe, they met up and they know each other very well because um, Balogan almost took the boot in the French League One over Kylian Mbappe and uh, he found himself in a situation of obviously scoring 21 goals and Kylian Mbappe found himself in a situation of outscoring him because he scored 29 goals and Balogan had 21. So it shows you that they know themselves very well and he's really doing a great job. So they mate, you never know. He might have talked to him, he might have talked to him and asked him what all about Arsenal and you know what takes place when these players meet in the holidays. Now Sisa Aspliqueta recently linked to Inter Milan, but looks like he has decided to get back to Spain. And Fabrizio Roman has gone ahead to confirm us that Sisa Aspliqueta to Atletico Madrid. Here we go. Agreement in place over two year contract. Sisa Aspliqueta will sign until 2025, June. Chelsea will let him leave as a free agent. Matter of respect for former captain. Dutchman will be ready soon. Exclusive news confirmed. So. Atletico Madrid have gone ahead to take in Caesars Bliqueta. Ever since they lost <coughs> Clean Trip here to Newcastle, they've not gone ahead to fall to fall to fall or to really to replace a very good right back. But the time of replacement and who they've gone ahead to replace him with is the question. I think Caesars Bliqueta is burned out. Is burnt out. I've seen him on several occasions but with a league that is not so much fast but technical i think you can operate there better i've seen um, nervous jesus nervous who was playing at um man city play for um is it severe yeah he played for severe um, is it severe or rio betis one of those teams he has been playing for the team till now and he's still playing for the Spanish national team. But he's really aged, but he's playing as the right back, meaning that Caesar Spliqueta can go ahead and obviously adapt far much better to the La Liga than to the Premier League because the Premier League is all about pace physicality. And he was an elite right back, but right now he's no longer an elite right back because he cannot match the levels of what the Premier League really requests for. So it's a good move for him, and Chelsea have gone ahead to grant him a move that is really cost free because they've terminated his contract and they've obviously went ahead to give him the best that he deserves as a captain of Chelsea and is leaving to join Atletico Madrid. And if I told you are Chelsea, you'll understand that that is great for you because of the wage bill. When you look at as Pliqueta weekly wages, his weekly wage at Chelsea was £180,000 a week, meaning that by getting him out of the club by so doing, you are reducing what we call the wage bill of Chelsea that also is inclusive when the financial fair play is really being evaluated by UEFA. Now, 
Living Caesars Plicueta there we talk about another player Willian right formerly at Chelsea and Arsenal he has been playing for Fulham he has gone ahead to throw into a threat and obviously a Chelsea correspondent and Fulham correspondent as Niza Kinsella has gone ahead to reveal to us the following that Willian will leave Fulham after they after they don't meet after they don't if they don't meet his wage demands on a new contract he will now look for a free transfer within the Premier League that is Willian Willian is really a very good player they signed him from Brazil and uh, he made Arsenal fans question them themselves a lot that when he signed on the free from Arsenal right sorry from Chelsea to Arsenal he had only four five good games at the beginning of the season and he flopped he was earning 300,000 pounds a week and obviously Arsenal told him quit they did what we call a mutual contract termination and went to Brazil <laughs> that is William really now from Brazil he came in and played for Fulham he has been firing in all cylinders at Fulham hit the ground running but his contract is expiring now he has put on a very huge wage demand for Fulham and Fulham believe he's not worth it and they want to let him go and he's also willing to join the Premier League. I'm, I'm so much surprised that he's not going to Saudi Arabia, you know, because Saudi Arabia really would have gotten hate to really offer him the amount of money that he deserves. But in the Premier League, I think there are very many teams that can sign him. Teams like Burnley can go ahead and really sign him. But if I told him William, sorry, but if I told him Fulham, I think it's better they kept William, you know. It's different when you give an astronomical wage to a player who is really performing or outperforming others to giving a wage to a player whom you've just signed and flops. You know, William has gone ahead to outperform most of the players at Fulham and I think they might find themselves in a situation where it's doing the needful of really needing him. But you never know what Marco Silva was going to have to decide with the board. They must be having what we call a weekly wage ceiling that no player can break. And if at all you want to break it, they rather lose you on a free. So maybe Daniel James will take on that objective to go ahead and really play onto that left attacking side of the midfield. But Marco Silva is trusted on really identifying talent. He has a very good eye. He has a very good eye when it comes to really scouting good talent and he might get in through one of the best talents from that side. And lastly, let's talk about Tina Lee. Tina Lee from AC Milan to Newcastle. Looks like the weekend is up for his announcement. For Brizio Romano, it's time for official club announcement and unveiling for Sandro Tina Lee deal closed and sealed one week ago. Newcastle will announce Tinali as new signing this weekend. Announcement expected within 24 hours from now. So let's anticipate for the announcement of Sandro Tinali, central midfielder signed for 70 million euros, equivalent to 60 million pounds from, in, from AC Milan to a side of Newcastle. And it's going to be playing that midfield with uh, Bruno Guimarães. What <laughs> midfield? that we are going to watch. That shows you that when you see teams like Arsenal spending 105 million pounds on Declan Rice, 100, 105 on Declan Rice, 67 on Kai Havertz, 41 on Julian Timber, they know exactly what their nemesis is, are all about and Newcastle are really punching up for the Champions League. So guys, your thoughts on to Arsenal weighing up for Kylian Mbappe transfer are welcome in the comment section below. What do you make about? What do you make about Caesar's Plicueta? going to Atletico Madrid so here we go William threat of really leaving Fulham and lastly Sandro Tinali his announcement today at Newcastle a sign up for now see you later Rock and David remains my name and keep it Rockani Media Football and don't forget to subscribe because we always bring you the latest news and information as far as your football news and transfers are really concerned Ciao, ciao. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. My out.